Hey folks, this is Terry. This is the Proto School weekly call for May 16th, maybe, somewhere. I think that's where it, when it is now where I am. Um, so we've been working hard on Proto School this week, <laughs> not been doing a good job of making notes for our call. So we'll, we'll wing it a little today. Um, in terms of, so we can kind of go through in the usual order. So content development itself is probably probably me who's been doing the most on that. I've been continuing with the MFS tutorial and making good progress. I have one little blocker right now, which Ali is trying to help me get unstuck with. And then I have a little bit more validation to add. And then we should be pretty close to having a first draft, hopefully within a week. And then I would love some testers to work through it and let me know what's confusing or not and whether the flow that we invented makes sense to people who didn't invent it. Um, but I really hope that's nearing its end. Um, in terms of more UXy things, um, Diogo, what have you been up to? So, Anything you actually remember? I know you've been doing stuff. Uh, yeah, I have to check my notes. <laughs> uh, it was, yeah, pretty minor stuff, but I can show. Sure. Yeah. So I'm not going to do a live show and tell. No because, worries. Yeah. So, oh yeah, I forgot about this. One nice thing we added was now we have support. Oh yeah, for those red and green. Down. Yep. Yeah, when you log uh, messages to the user, uh, before you, you you basically just log strings, and right mm -hmm. now you can make it a bit prettier. Now yeah. you can uh, log with Markdown. It's yeah, that's a tiny, great. tiny detail, but yeah, it's good. Yeah, Another that's tool. one of the things yeah. I noticed also when I was proofing that, that trying to be good and not put everything in the same issue, but we should go back to the first ones that were built because I think Volker was using that to do a lot of the stuff that now we would do in the log box. So there might be a few things where we want to move some of what's in the success or fail message to the log, um, where there's a little more space to kind of show and have more formatting of the data when you are showing something more complex. Yeah, that makes sense. But it's, it's not, that. that's not something that's urgent, but, um, Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, but it's a nice addition too. Yeah. Uh, a super minor detail is not. Uh, can you see? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. is zooming in? See, I told you you did things. You've been doing <laughs> stuff. Can you guys see when I zoom? Uh, it's not yeah. getting bigger. It's big enough for me to see what I know okay, we're looking so. at. Jim, can you tell what yeah. we're looking at? Do you know what we're about to be excited about? Mm, no. <laughs> it's okay. The, uh, yeah, previously we had this little icon was a play play icon. Yeah, it was like the triangle, that, oh, so it looked more like yeah. playing. It implied that that a video will be playing, would be uh, playing. So people got confused, so I made this yep. this little icon. Yeah, and yeah. I, we changed it. Yeah. So uh, yeah, as I said, great. super minor. <laughs> and I had fixed uh, I don't know if it was before or after the last call, but I fixed a problem with the alt tags. So it was, if you used a screen reader, it was reading the in progress as complete instead. But it was cool that when I used the screen reader, it worked like exactly the way we intended. Like lesson one is complete. This one's in progress. This one's not yet started. So it was good. Yeah, that's cool. What else, Diego? Uh, just one more stuff that I've been, been working on. As we, we already talked about, it would be cool to give uh, the authors the possibility to add another lesson, a final lesson for wrapping up the tutorial, basically, or linking to external sources, uh, like a, a lesson that is just like a next steps. So I've been working on that. Let me see, yeah. So now we can create one. I'm, I've already updated the readme and there's a, an open PR if you guys want to check it out. This is failing. I'm already fixing the test because I forgot <laughs> something. So it's crashing. But so you get an idea. Uh, now we have a final lesson that I, I named it resources. It will have every, on every tutorial, it will have the same name. 
we can yeah. change that. I've gone with resources, but we can have mm -hmm. whatever. A little description here. And when you, well, you basically, it's, I, I've managed to put, it's like a separate question. We are, on this tutorial, there are three lessons, mm -hmm. and there are the resources. Uh, personally, I prefer having resources instead of lesson four, because it's really, it's not a lesson. So uh, I ended up doing lesson three of three, and then you have a next, and then you come to the next steps or resources, or what do you think the copy will be? So this will be just markdown. It's only a markdown file in our, uh, go ahead, sir. Yeah, so I, my concern with it being marked down is that it might be too open-ended. So what I, what I want is for this to be really, cons I think we talked a little about this earlier, like I want every author to use this in the same way as each other. So like one, for example, one thing we could decide is that this is, um, there are certain headers you can select from, and then you're giving it content to put in the bullets, like, like places to contribute and um, other tutorials or some, something like that where it's very structured and everyone's will have the same format as each other even though the content will be different. So we're giving more guidance as to like what's the right way to use this. Because if really what you're doing is writing about like, if you're just wrapping up the content, that shouldn't be this. That should be a, a separate like text only lesson. lesson in your thing. This should yeah. always be like the links out to learn more, to go to the next thing that makes sense for you to try. So I want to think of like, what's the most structure we can provide that will make people use it consistently. And it's kind of questionable, like exactly how we want to accomplish that and how it then translates into them making it. So they might be creating it using like a JSON object or something, depending what we you know, it's like the category that it goes in in the chunks of bullets or something instead of writing free form markdown. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, uh, yeah I do. So what are you? I agree or, or, uh, or maybe sort of. I don't agree. <laughs> okay. I think, yeah, I think you, the authors should have the liberty to write whatever, but I agree on the fact that if they just want to write, they can just create another lesson, a text only lesson. Uh, but if we want to make it a bit more more scoped and with the same layout, we have to define that layout so I can put it in a component or something like that. Right. Yeah. Yeah, we, we have to define that. What do you think, Jim? Potentially, uh, I don't know, I haven't done research, but like this might be a job for a schema or something that you can do, that you can apply on the markdown. So it's like, it has to validate. So it's like, you might be like, it has to have this section, this section. Um, yeah, we there's, can. There's probably there's probably some tools for that. I don't really know, but um, yeah, no, that's a nice suggestion. Yeah, you could we could do something like that. That would be cool. And that well, would resolve the validation problem. I mean, there there are a variety of things we could do. So either there are like three versions at least. One is totally open ended, like make a markdown file and give it this name, and it will end up here, and put whatever you want in it. That's something I don't want us to do. One is Diogo has built a component that creates the last file and you pass in like a JSON object and each thing is like a title and a link and like the kind of content it is, right? So like article, here's the title of the article, here's a link to the article, something like that. Or maybe like a category that it's in. So it's like, um, you know, uh, these are horrible names, but like websites that use this feature, like real life applications of this in the wild or uh, other tutorials or other things in Proto School to go to or whatever. Like we think of what those categories are and then they put a category and then the specific information like that they want in each of these bulleted things. And then this would always, like it would only load the header if it had content to go under it but it would be structured. So like these are the categories in everything and then you just click on the thing you want to go to. Like the way the chapters thing works, it checks whether they're, you know, it, it figures out what needs to actually be presented, but everyone's giving, providing the same kind of information to make it create itself. The in-between would be if we 
if we were not going to be that structured and we were going to have them use Markdown, then we should be providing a template that's precisely the way we want it. Like, is there a loose paragraph at the top or like a, a set paragraph of introductory text, like, hey, it's time to learn more. And then headers that we want them to use and they're already in, like all the markdown is there and there's a sample bullet that says like name of article, link to article, whatever, that is all written out and they're replacing the content with what they want. But they would then, some of them would try to do something completely different and we'd in the proofing process catch it and say, please don't do that. Some of them would use it as we intend and actually replace it with relevant content. Some of them would not want to use the fourth category of stuff and they'd just delete it or whatever. And again, we'd catch it in the proofing if they were doing something far off. But I think the more, whatever we want it to come out as, we want to get as close to that as possible at the time that they're building it so we don't end up having the back and forth and making them feel like they've wasted time coming up with a, a new format if we didn't want them to do it in that format. And I really want the consistency to make the site feel cohesive. Yeah. Well, consistency wise, I would say, as they already have to, to put things on JSON files, the best would be a, a JSON, as you said. Yeah. Text. But do we want to allow markdown? or it would be just simple? I guess the question would be, like, for each resource, what are you providing? Like, there's, there, and then does, does any of that need markdown? Like, we would be, obviously, it would come out formatted from the JSON stuff that they put in, but I think the only reason we need markdown is if we let them do a description and there's some reason the description might need it. So it might be that, you know, like previously I had suggested like each resource goes in a bullet and it has like a title and a link and a kind of thing it is, right? And maybe that's like some little colored symbol that says article and some different color that says whatever, like what tags or however we want to think about it. If we wanted to also have each thing either all of them or optionally have like a description field to say more about what the thing is. That's the only place I can think of where they might have some reason to use. No, but I don't really want them, to, but then, but then they could use it to kind of mess with the formatting. So if they're going to do it through JSON, I feel like, okay, the description is just going to be plain text that comes out in the font we chose for it to come out in and the headers are going to come out. So we don't want them to use Markdown to make their description look like that header or something, right? Yeah, yeah, I agree. As we want to make it strict, so Jason. Yeah, yeah, and you, I mean, we'll get, this is a feature that we will get feedback on and we'll implement it, so we'll just build, you know, build it in a way that, like we know that we're going to want it to be consistent, but we'll build it in a way that it will be easy for us to change what tags exist or what categories exist or rename the categories or whatever as we get feedback from people about how they actually want to be using it. Um, I don't know. Does that make sense? Does it sound okay to you guys? Yeah. Yeah. The one thing that worries me about this is uh, I think people uh, will end up not using this and just creating a new text on the lesson to wrap up what they want to wrap up. I think that's a real possibility. So I think it will be a man. I think it's a mandatory feature. <laughs> Is it a feature if it's mandatory? I think it's a, I think it's a thing that every lesson will have. And they can also put, like if they want to have a text only thing as lesson whatever, are you saying that you wish that didn't have a lesson number on it if they had it? So let's say they have like four coding challenges that right now would be lessons one to four. And then they have like a text wrap up that like ties it all together. Right now that would be lesson five, which would be a text. It might be a text only lesson or they could do a multiple choice or something soon once we invent that. If they want to have that there, some people are going to kind of have that built into the last, the, the text of the last thing they're actually teaching. And then this would be the resources. So the, the other option would be if your concern is about that text being uh, 
called a lesson when it's not an exercise, we could make a category that's like wrap. So like lesson, whatever, lesson, whatever, lesson, whatever, wrap up, and then resources and wrap up would be just a text. It would be a text only file that prints a different name. Instead of printing lesson, it prints the words wrap up. But you would make it using the, the text only template. Um, but if someone submitted that to me, if someone submitted a workshop and did that and didn't also include the resources page, I would ask them to go back and make it. Like, I think, I think we want it to be built into the thing. And I think as we add this feature, we want to go back and add these pages for the other ones. People will disagree about what the content should be and we can update it as we go, but we want to make it so that as soon as we merge this PR, every, thing that already exists has one of these and everything moving forward has a resources page. That's, that's my vision for it. Okay. Can you do me a, a huge favor then write up in an issue the template that you have in mind? <laughs> yeah, I guess About so. The... I can take a first stab at it and then we can see how, what, what people disagree with and then we can go from there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Does that did I did I get at what what your concern was with like the last the labeling of the last thing? Uh, you have to put text yeah. at the end or it's I don't have a strong opinion. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> All right. Do you have any words of advice on this beyond what you already suggested? Uh, I'm not familiar enough with what's there right now that really have a okay. good comment on yeah. it. So. I mean, this is going to be the opportunity. Like a, a lot of times people suggest content that doesn't work, like that won't yet work, be supported by ProtoSchool, right? Like if you want to teach a command line thing that doesn't work in ProtoSchool right now and the compromise is like, hey, that's a great idea. You have this great resource, build it somewhere else and we can link to it from the closest related thing, right? You can do this and then you can go and build a whole D app with the new skills you learned by going outside to the site. So that's the main purpose is like letting people get, get references to some content that lives outside of Proto School and can't fit in Proto School or doesn't make sense to, um, and just have ways to feel like this is this continued journey and you're not you can choose to be done if you want to when you're done with our lessons, but you don't need to be. There's always more out there to learn. So, I mean, that's the point of it. So, however we accomplish that. Um, cool. Anything else on the UX side? I'm trying to think whether I've been doing anything. I don't know. <laughs> um, and then chap on the kind of chapter organizing side, there are a few requests for new chapters that are queued up that I need to circle around and um, dig into and get to maybe next week, um, have some time to set up some more chapters, repos for people. Um, and I was just talking to Ollie and he has offered to take the first stab at setting up our, uh, probably using the Countly account that we have for IPFS to set up some measurement stuff so being able to figure out page views and and has an idea for how you work around the fact that because it's a single page application it's really on only one page there's like things you can put in the router so it triggers an event that makes it that makes Countly see it as a different page view or whatever so that's Countly for people who haven't seen it as like an alternative to Google Analytics that might be less scary for people who hear the phrase um, and that's where we'll also track Things like, did you need to push on the reset code button or did you push to view the solution? And that will help us figure out which lessons are too hard. Um, the page views will help us figure out which lessons are most popular, all of that stuff. Uh, we could probably also track, did you click the thing at the bottom that says that you have a question? We can get a sense of that, obviously, from the issues that come in, but it probably makes, there might be a way to track it there too. Um, yeah, so Ollie offered to take that on. And then I think the next uh, big thing that we want to prioritize, a lot of the work that we're doing right now is as a lead up to IPFS camp, which for anyone watching, apply by tomorrow, because then you won't be able to for IPFS camp, which is in Barcelona, June 27th to 30th. Um, so I've had conversations with um, 
Lytle and Allen about what they might do, which would be pretty light on Proto School if they do anything. It would be more likely to be like text or multiple choice things. Um, but I'm, you know, staying in those conversations to see what content we might have coming through, in which case one of our big priorities will be to help them get that stuff through, help proof it, help with any questions they have about building it. But the next UX feature that we need to focus on after the um, the thing that you're doing right now, Diogo, is being able to have multiple choice lessons as a format. So that's something that I would have fun doing either myself or pairing um, to try to make that an option for people. And that's something that Alan might be interested in using for camp. So we want to try to at least start on it next week, I'd say. Um, yeah, anything else in Proto School land that we want to talk about? Or related, Proto School related? Adjacent, do you have any adjacent things you want to talk about, Jim? Uh, not really. I've got some ideas, but we can leave that for another another meeting. So. Okay. Um, yeah, and I think a lot of ideas will come out of camp too. I think it would be nice. I think it's a it's a big ask, but I think it it would be really nice for us to get to a point where even though we don't have the content built, we have kind of a tree of what is the content we hope will get built, so that people who are interested in building but don't have their own idea for content, or maybe they have an idea, but their idea can't yet be supported in Proto School. But hey, pick from these things, which can be. Mm -hmm. um, so that's something that I hope we could create before IPFS camp and iterate on while we're there. Just get those ideas down. And some of them will be things that we can do with the state of the site right now, even if we don't have time to, but they're, they can be done within the current scope. And some of them will be things that are currently out of scope and we can decide whether or not to change the system to make them in scope. Um, but I think that's something that will be helpful to get more contributors is having a few issues that people could take if they want to. Um, yeah. Cool. Anything else people want to chat about? Mm. Sure. No. <laughs> All righty. Oh yeah, I bet none of us were taking notes, so that'll be fun. I'll go back and see if I can remember anything. Or drop, if you remember you showed us something, go drop it in the notes and then I'll go back and fill in whatever I remember. Um, and then share the video and the notes with everyone. Um, these notes, by the way, live in the roadmap repo in the Proto School org if anybody's looking for them. Um, so yeah, that's it for me today and we'll see you all next week. And then there are a lot of Proto School chapter leaders who have been accepted for IPFS camp. So I'm excited to see some of them there. Should be good. Cool. 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 I'll talk to you guys right. later. Thanks for all the hard work, Diogo. Jim, I'm sure you're doing hard work. It's just on different <laughs> things. Thanks for all your hard work on other things that are related to our community. Okay. okay. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Bye, guys. <laughs>